Hello, my name is Dr. Jimmy Bartlett. I am Professor Emeritus at the University of Alabama at Birmingham. My colleagues and I have long observed that there is often a discordance between the signs and symptoms in patients with suspected dry eye disease. We will hear symptoms during the patient history, yet when we look at the patient clinically in the examination, we may fail to find any signs that would seem to correlate with the patient's symptoms. Further, during, during treatment of these patients, we will often find that symptoms may improve, yet the signs can remain the same or even worsen. And conversely, sometimes patients will have a worsening of symptoms, yet the signs seem to be improving. So the accurate diagnosis and classification of dry eye disease is quite a clinical challenge. It seems to be an ongoing problem for us in the clinic and also in performing clinical trials. The changes in severity of clinical signs often simply do not correspond to patient-reported symptoms. So my colleagues and I were interested to conduct a systematic literature review using the databases in PubMed and Embase to search for English language articles on the association between clinical signs and symptoms in patients with dry eye disease up to and including February 2014 in the literature base. 34 articles were identified, which included 175 individual sign and symptom association analyses. Statistical significance was reported for associations between sign and symptom measures in about 64% of the studies, but only for 24% of the individual analyses. Of 175 individual analyses, 148 reported correlation coefficients, of which the vast majority, about 87% in fact, were between minus 0.4 and plus 0.4, indicating low to moderate correlation. We observed no clear trends in the strength of associations relative to study size, statistical methods, or study region, although results from three of the studies did suggest that disease severity may be a factor. We concluded in our research that associations between dry eye disease signs and symptoms are low and inconsistent, which may have implications for monitoring the response to treatment. We certainly need further studies to increase our understanding of the idiopathogenesis of dry eye disease and to identify the most reliable and relevant measures of disease to enhance clinical assessment of the disease and the measurement of response to therapeutic interventions not only in the clinical setting, but also in the setting of clinical trial interventions. Thank you very much for your interest in our paper.